Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel, or if you're new, welcome. I am Juliette, the creator of Concierge CPA. In this video, we will explore the different types of transactions that can impact the company's equity accounts. We'll go through detailed examples to see how equity increases or decreases with each transaction type, while ensuring the accounting equation stays in balance through the proper use of debits and credits. This video builds on my previous video where I discussed many different types of accounts that fall under the equity section of the balance sheet. If you missed that video, don't worry, you will still be able to follow along here and I left a link in the description below in case you would like to check it out. In this video, we are going to look at debits and credits for the following types of transactions that impact equity. Contributions by owners, common stock issuances with additional paid-in capital, retained earnings increases with net income, retained earnings decreases with net losses, withdrawals by owners, and distribution of dividends. So let's get started. First, let's quickly review the fundamental accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. This equation must always remain in balance after recording any transaction. When an asset increases, either a liability or equity must increase by the same amount. Conversely, with an asset decreases, either a liability or equity must decrease. So let's quickly recap how debits and credits affect the accounting equation. In accounting, debits increase dividends, expenses, and assets. But decrease liability, equity, and revenue accounts. Conversely, credits increase liability, equity, and revenue accounts, but decrease dividends, assets, and expense accounts. Now let's review the definition of owner's equity. Equity accounts represent the owner's claims on the business after all liabilities have been deducted from assets. This is essentially net assets. Equity accounts include common stock, which are contributions, retain earnings, which is the accumulation of revenue, expenses, gains, and losses over time, and dividends, or withdrawals by owners. Now let's break down the transactions that change equity balance. There are only two types of transactions, those that increase equity and those that decrease it. Let's start with the transactions that increase equity. The transactions that increase equity are contributions in a sole proprietor business or partnership, issuance of stock in corporations, and when the business earns a net income. Contributions by owners is the same as investment by owners and issuance of stock. These are old methods to infuse capital into a business. Owner's investment, also known as owner's equity, involves direct contributions from the business owners. You have this in sole proprietor business models or partnerships. If the entity is a corporation, then they issue stock to raise capital. Issuing stock involves selling shares of the company to public or private investors, resulting in shareholders' equity. Both methods provide essential funding for business operations, expansion, and other financial needs, reflecting an increase in the equity section of the balance sheet. Let's look at an example of each. Example number one, owner's investment. Suppose an owner invests $10,000 cash into the business. This will result in this journal entry. You will debit your cash for $10,000 and you credit your owner's capital account for $10,000. The credit to owner's capital account increases the equity. Now let's look at an example of issuing shares. Suppose the company issues 10,000 shares of $5 par value common stock for $8 per share in cash. The journal entry to record this would be, you debit your cash for $80,000 and you credit your common stock for $50,000. The difference is the additional paid in capital. So you need an additional credit of $30,000 to APIC. This transaction increases the owner's equity by $80,000. This entry shows the cash is increased by $80,000 from the proceeds received. The common stock increases by the par value of $50,000 and the additional paid in capital increases by 30,000, which is the excess amount received over the par value. The total shareholders' equity therefore increases by 80,000 from issuing the new shares of common stock. The accounting equation therefore remains balanced. $80,000 increase in cash 
$80,000 increase in equity. The next example is to show the impact on equity when a company earns net income for the period. When a company generates revenues greater than its expenses for a period, this increases equity through credits to a revenue account and debits to an expense account. The net income becomes part of the retained earnings equity account. For example, suppose the company earns revenues of $75,000 and has expenses of $50,000 per their year. The net is $25,000 net income. To record this, first you debit your expenses for $50,000, you credit your revenue for $75,000. This net income of $25,000 creates an increase in the retained earnings account when the period is closed. Remember, the revenue and expense accounts balances get transferred to the retained earnings account at the end of the period. If the net of expenses, which is debits, and revenues, credit, is a credit, then you have net income. And in our example, equity increases by the $25,000 net income amount through retained earnings. Other types of transactions cause equity to decrease. Some of these are dividends, owner's withdrawals, and net losses. Let's look at the examples of each. Dividends. If a company declares and pays dividends to shareholders, this decreases equity through a debit to the retained earnings account. For example, if the company declares and pays a $15,000 dividend, you record a debit to retained earnings for $15,000 and you credit your cash or dividends payable, depending on the timing of the payment, for $15,000. Equity is reduced by the $15,000 dividend amount. Another type of transaction that reduces equity is owner's withdrawals. If an owner withdraws cash or assets from the business for personal use, this decreases equity through the debit to the drawing account. For example, suppose the owner withdraws $10,000 cash for personal use. To record this transaction, you debit the drawing account and you credit your cash for the same amount, $10,000. The equity decreases by $10,000, but the equation stays balanced. Now let's take a look at if the company has a net loss for the period instead of a net income. A period net loss also reduces equity. Notice it has the opposite effect as net income. When expenses exceed revenues, the company has a net loss, which decreases equity through the retained earnings account. Suppose the company has revenue of $40,000 and expenses of $60,000 for the year. You debit your expense account for $60,000, you credit your revenue for $40,000, and the net, which is your net loss, is $20,000. In this case, the debits are more than the credits, resulting in an overall debit to retain earnings when the balance are transferred to retain earnings to close the period. The debit in retain earnings of $20,000 decreases the equity by $20,000. And that is all for today. I hope you found this visual guide of debits and credits through the equity accounts helpful and easy to follow. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.